Hi, everyone, and welcome once again to one of our virtual events at Hobby Memorial Library. I'm Cindy Oser, and we have with us today uh, Mayborn Science Theater astronomer Warren Hart. Hey, Warren. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Yay. Well, we are so excited because it's May, and May looks like an extremely busy celestial um, month for us. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> So yep. go ahead and let us know what we're going to be able to see up in the stars. Okay. Well, uh, let me finish up here first. Uh, There's our last week in April, and uh, you can on the library there. You can look at the April calendar, and this coming Friday is uh, going to be in the evening a good time uh, for you to go out after the sun sets in the west and keep looking over there to the west, and then you will get to watch the planet Mercury as it will go ahead and set also. So it's trailing the sun, and that's why you'd be able to see it. And the sunset is supposed to be 808, so 8, 8, 8, 10, and Mercury will be up for uh, still visible for almost two hours, an hour and 40 minutes. So that's you uh, rare for it to be separated that amount of time from the sun. So that and then this Saturday at 530 is when I will be at the planetarium doing the uh, my presentation there inside and be talking about what we're going to talk about today, but uh, there at the planetarium, I can show some things we can't do here. Cool. And, and I don't mean that that it's bad things. Oh, it's it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right, Cindy. Let's go ahead, and when you're ready, let's bring up uh, the calendar and let's start going through and see what's up. All right. And talk well, about your. Uh, your page here, which is outstanding. Well, we uh, have a, a lib guide. If you go down, you know, go to our library website and you can find it under our study guides, the Astronomy Mayborn Science Theater lib guide. And this is where we get all of our information from that Warren goes through every every month. And so we're gonna be doing our night sky calendars and I've got one already set up for this month. So take it away, Warren. All right, let's look at that first week. So uh, let's take, see what's up there. There's a number of things. And uh, initially there I put on uh, Sunday and Monday, uh, I'm just telling where the sun is, uh, as far as you see, the sun is in the constellation Aries uh, called the Ram. And then in each of the planets, there's Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and uh, possibility of seeing Uranus. That's the farthest one that you can see and the hardest one actually to see. And so those are just to give you an idea of where they are. But let's skip over. And let's look at on Thursday, uh, for those who've been with us before, you will remember uh, I talk about the moon as it orbits here on Earth. It goes completely around uh, uh, us and it's a circle, but it's not a perfect single radius circle. It's an elliptical circle uh, like an, an egg. And so there is a time of the month when uh, the moon is going around that it's closest to us and there's a time when it's farthest from us. And this Thursday is, as you see there, is of all the 13 times it's far away from us, this is no, the seventh farthest. And each time when it's far, uh, the moon will look smaller because the further away it gets from you, the smaller it looks. And there's some information. But I have on Friday, and I put it in red so that you can consider uh, a good time to see a meteor shower, and it's called Eta Aquariid. And <clears throat> 
the, the name comes from, first of all, the second word, Aquarian, comes from the constellation Aquarius. So wherever the uh, meteors seem to come out of the sky, that's called the radiant point. And where is that? And it happens to be coming out of an air, part of the area for Aquarius. And that's how it's, <clears throat> how it's named. And uh, the eta, Greek letter eta, is just added there from uh, by the astronomers for uh, uh, giving it uh, the specific uh, one for that meteor shower. And now you notice, however, for this uh, meteor shower, uh, the best time to view it, uh, pretty well most any meteor shower, is from uh, approximately midnight on to sunrise. And so as you would watch uh, early, early, early in the morning, as time goes on, you would see the meteor shower there uh, up until, of course, uh, sunrise. However, during that time at three o'clock, is when it's uh, calculated and that it will be the peak time that the most number of meteor shower, uh, meteors would be seen during that at that time period uh, there. So that's something for you to consider this uh, next Friday uh, in May. All right, let's go down to our second week and uh, uh, I've also included for uh, for you in the calendar when each of the planets and uh, where they move from a constellation to another constellation as they are moving through the sky. So as you notice up on the first on Sunday, the first day, I have in, indicated that Venus starts out <coughs> uh, is. Uh, the month, and actually it's in it right now, it's in the constellation of Pisces, the fishes. But on Monday, uh, Sunday the 8th, Venus leaves Pisces, the fishes, and it goes to Cetus, the sea monster or the whale. And these are just for your uh, own information. And uh, there's no um, lines or uh, areas in the sky, you just have to imagine about that, but uh, just to get your information there of the movement of each of the planets. And also on the, that Sunday, <clears throat> we have our first quarter of our moon. And uh, we, if we look back on the April calendar, on the last day of April the 30th, was it will be uh, this coming Saturday will be a new moon. So it's been going, it's uh, started its uh, growing uh, waxing uh, crescent. And then now here on Monday the 8th, it's a full first quarter moon. <clears throat> and so the, you look at the moon and it looks like half and half. Half is illuminated and the other half is dark. And so the the word, another word for they're talking about a first quarter is as we would look at it, it looks like the moon is split in two, illuminated and dark, and that would be a, also called another term, a dichotomy. A rare, rare word not usually used, but I just put it in there so you can wow your friends when you go outside and say, hey, look up there at that dichotomous moon. Is that what? And then you just get to knock their socks off as you tell them. Now, the next day, notice uh, I put it in red because we're going to continue to count down on Monday the 9th is 700 days until our total solar eclipse. And be sure you stay healthy drink a lot of Geritol and pray for clear skies because that day it's once one time, there's no do over. You can't call and say, I didn't get to see it. There was a cloud in the sky, back it up. Nope, nope, sorry. Now, also 
we have the first of our nine and a half constellations this month. And you say, Warren, you've gone nuts. Half of a constellation? Well, yeah, in a way, but you'll find out as we go on. So pay attention. Now, here's our first constellation, and it is Baute's uh, The Herdsman. Thank you, Cindy. There is the page for it, the first page. The uh, white area is the area in the sky that the professional astronomers designated back in 1930-ish of where each constellation would be considered its area in the sky. So there's Baute's, and uh, you can see that. Uh, if you look down at the number seven, the circle that's number seven, that is the, const uh, the star called Arcturus. And the reason it's a large, dark uh, circle, if you'll scroll down, Cindy, on this same first page, just a little bit more, let's, there, oh, there you go. You notice across the bottom there are different size black circles. And depending on how bright that circle, uh, that star, that planet is, or star that we can see, the only way we can designate it is that we've decided that the brighter it is, the larger the black circle. And so you see number seven there is in the region of about a number between a number one and a zero uh, in its uh, brightness or the astro astronomical term would be its uh, magnitude. And that would give you and if you'll scroll back down uh, on up on the page there, and let's get the top, okay, right there. You see up above the, and to the right of Butes, you see it says Ursa Major, the big bear. And what you see there, those three uh, dark circles are the three stars in the handle of the Big Dipper. And of course, the fourth star is the upper left corner of the pot or the dipper or the pan or the ladle, whatever you want to call it. And so for memory purpose for myself, and I encourage if you want to try it for yourself, I look at those four stars and in your mind, there's that fourth one over to the right. And then these three, and I say, it doesn't bend the handle, it arcs, A-R-C-S. And because I follow that uh, <clears throat> arcing path, and I come down and I come right there to Arcturus. Now, if you will go to the second page, if you would, Cindy, on Butes, scroll on up for us. There you are. And let's look for number seven. And you see there is Arcturus, and there's its uh, Greek name, Alpha Butes. And then there's its address, if you will. It's uh, A, that's right ascension, and the little uh, delta D, uh, it's uh, uh, latitude. And then you see there's its visible magnitude. It's a plus 0, uh, 0.15, so it's between a 1 and a 0. It's getting uh, bright, it's brighter. It's 163 light years away. So you can, in your mind, you can subtract 163 from 2022, and you would come up with something like 1987 or somewhere in that uh, range. And it happens to be 3.35 times larger than our sun. So all of those numbers on there, 1 through 28, are the uh, is the information for each of those stars. So let's go back up to the first page. Scroll on up for it, if you will. There's all those numbers and uh, different things. Uh, that So you, what is number seven? What's number one? What's number? And all those you can get. Now I have one other thing that's on there. Uh, GRB080. What? what? What's that? Let's go back to the second page and scroll up for us and let's look. Keep going down. <clears throat> keep going. Keep going. And there we go. 
we have, <clears throat> first of all, you have asterisms uh, and bordering constellations, the constellations that are on the edge of uh, Baute's, and then interesting information. Oh, there's something about Arcturus. It was the first star that has, was recorded that was observed in daytime in 1635. And then there's some other uh, things about it. But here's something, and there is a paragraph talking about there in green, GRB and its long number. And I'll just mention to you the very first line that on March 18, 2008, you see that there was a gamma ray burst. And I should have put in there a GRB, so you'd know what GRB is. And that's a, a very significant thing to be able to see it because it is one of the brightest things that you could ever detect. You see down on the uh, third line of it, brightest object ever detected. And uh, the fourth line, it says it's estimated that that light they saw was two and a half million times brighter than even our brightest known supernova. So that was a bright little thing in the sky. And uh, then there's the latitude you have to be at in between there to view all of Butte. So the second page is available for every one of the constellations that are listed here uh, for the month of May. And Cindy has, uh, she's mentioned there on the uh, LibGuide page, the specifically the one for the planetarium. Uh, the constellation page, you can go to a constellation. If you know its name, you can type in its letter a beginning letter and you'll find uh, uh, Butte's and a listing of the, all the letters that start with B and then also uh, what season it happens to be in or what month it happens to be in. So there's different ways that you can go and there she's showing you all of those different uh, ways that you can do it. Okay, thank you, Cindy. Let's go back to the calendar. By the way, if anyone has a question while I'm talking, feel free to uh, call in, text in a question, and that never bothers me. What does bother me is if you wait until the end and say, well, I have a question back on what you said uh, three weeks ago on my, no, don't do that. Please ask the question right then and we'll deal with it because that's, that question deals with that day and the context of what we're talking about. So I am never offended by you asking them. I am disappointed if you wait until the end. Okay, now we've had Butte's. We'll skip on over then to on the 12th. And there is again what I've said that uh, the planet Venus will have moved from out of uh, let's see what is in in Pisces, uh, the fishes, and it goes there. It goes into that. Now on the 14th, uh, the sun uh, also moves and it goes into a constellation called Taurus the Bull. Now definitely you can't see that because that's daytime and you couldn't see it, but uh, it's there for your information. But we do have our second constellation of the month, and that is Circinus. So let's go there, Cindy, and let's see what in the world is Circinus. Oh, it's the navigator's compass. And um, uh, as a navigator in uh, the Air Force, I used a something looking like that, a compass uh, that the uh, two little uh, points up at the end up there, the the two stars, they would be on uh, a, not a compass you would hold in your hand and look at. You would use it. Uh, one of those would be, uh, we'll say that number seven there is the one with the pointer on it. And so you would stick that on your map, uh, your chart, 
and then you would uh, spread out the legs of the comp that compass and find either a distance or the direction or whatever you want to use and that's that kind of compass we're talking about and that's definitely one what I used in the B-52. So anyway, there's Circinus. Now we have something here, a, uh, let's see what color, uh, brown uh, tan line, and it says it's CTC Planetarium Southern Horizon. Ah, and notice over on the side, you'll see the number outside the box there. It says a minus 50 degrees, a minus 60 degrees, down at the bottom a minus 70 degrees. So we are in, looking at Circinus in the Southern Hemisphere, and we can see at our Southern horizon, based on being here at our latitude, uh, there that we can see that far south to that line and everything below it, you cannot see it unless you happen to get up and get in a vehicle or move down or travel down further south. And then though that would start coming up uh, as you would see there. And last week we talked about Centaurus and the big, big, big circle there. That's Alpha Centauri and the other one to its right that's Beta Centauri. And of course, Alpha Centauri is a famous uh, star in uh, uh, your uh, reading of, um, what am I trying to think of? Uh, uh, star Trek and science fiction. Yeah, science fiction, Star Trek. Yeah, the, trying to get the, those in there. Thank you, Cindy. Anyway, there is Sir Sinus. And as you scroll down to the second page, uh, you will see there's not that many stars, and uh, but it's still keep on going. That's if you don't not hear uh, at the planetarium, you don't have that on. So there's the list. Again, the, all the different things, bordering constellations, interesting information, and where you have to be on Earth to be able to see it. And uh, notice. Um, we uh, you you have to be uh, up as far north as 19 degrees and 23 minutes north, and that is below us. Uh, let's see, 31 degrees. That is 12 degrees down below us, about 720 miles. So you'd have a ways to go to be able to see the top part and uh, see all of Circinus. All right, let's go back to the calendar. And uh, we have uh, on here, uh, there is on uh, Circinus, and <clears throat> we have uh, another constellation that is going to be going down. We're going to go down to our third week. And before we get to our next constellation, there is something that's going to happen on Sunday morning the during the night of the 15th now i want to point this out the total lunar eclipse and i highlighted that in red is when this is going to happen uh it not on the 15th it's pointing over to when it's going to happen which is on friday the 20th through the night to saturday morning the 21st but i could not <clears throat> put all of the information on there. Uh, so I have here mentioning what it's going to be like. Uh, the constellation, well, uh, let me back up. The information is on sa uh, Friday the 20th, Saturday the 21st. That's what that box over there is for. The actual lunar eclipse here is on Sunday uh, evening, the 15th. And you see there, there is when we have our full moon and you only have a lunar eclipse when it's a full moon. So let's just in our, let's look over on that, what's the information on 20 the 21st. Here's the information on the total lunar eclipse on uh, 
Sunday, May the 15th, the first time point uh, of something that's going to happen is just labeled uh, U1, ULNA 1. And that's at 928 in the evening. So it starts Sunday evening at 928. And you notice it says the partial lunar eclipse begins. Now it's going to take a while as it comes on because it's going to be very faint. But as it comes, the moon, uh, what it's doing, it's coming into Earth's shadow. And so we are. Uh, we always have a, a shadow out in space. Every object that's up there has a shadow in space. And so here is uh, the moon uh, getting into our shadow. And it's going to be partial until an hour and a mi one minute later, then it is at U2, we call that. And that is when it's the total lunar eclipse and so there it is and then the point of which it's in the middle of the total uh, lunar eclipse the greatest uh, darkest it would be uh, on the shadow is right there the greater lunar eclipse is at 11 12 p.m and also our full moon is at 11 14 p.m and so then as the moon continues moving uh, out of our uh, shadow, then we still have total lunar eclipse, but it quits at 1154. And then as it continues on into Monday morning at 1256 in the morning AM, the partial lunar eclipse ends. So let me go back to make sure that I haven't confused you. The eclipse occurs on Sunday evening, the 15th, and goes through midnight to Monday morning, the 16th, and the information is over there on the right on the 20th and the 21st. And I'm sure that I messed all that up at the initial time I said it, but I want to clear it up here. That's on 15th and 16th is the eclipse, and the info is on the 20th and the 21st. Any Lawrence, questions? Yes. yes, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Okay, there is a definite time difference for the lunar eclipse and the sun eclipse. You know, because the sun eclipse, you're saying, you know, is like like four minutes or five minutes. And yes. I know this is probably a math thing and a speed thing, yes. but what's going faster because the lunar eclipse is obviously a much longer process. Yes. It's moving faster. Well, two things is uh, Earth is still rotating on its axis at the same speed. and But you have to go across, the, you have to go uh, the full, a full moon, which is a half a degree in the sky when you look at it, to go across there. And that's part of the additional time point and it's going into our shadow and uh, the moon is on the far side of us and so it we're we uh, the the moon is largest uh, there when it's like that as we see in the sky a solar eclipse is when the moon is around on the other side in daytime between us and the sun and so we're going through the moon's shadow and the moon has a much smaller shadow than Earth's shadow because of the different sizes of the two objects in the sky. And that uh, adds up to why it takes longer, if you would. And the path would is if you plotted it out and if you look on a chart uh, in a book that shows a path of the lunar eclipse it's pretty well it's uh it's almost a full hemisphere of earth that's affected as opposed to a total solar eclipse depending on how close uh, the moon is to us and what size of shadow reaches earth 
uh, it could be maybe up to 80 miles wide. And so it comes through at the speed of the sun, uh, the, the moon and earth all combined. And it's four and a half minutes. The maximum total solar eclipse is in the range of about seven minutes plus. So good question. Finally had a question. Okay. <laughs> Just don't make me answer question. anything. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, on Monday, the 16th, is our next constellation, Ursa Minor, and uh, that is the Little Bear. Let's look at Ursa Minor. And you can scroll up to get a little, there you go. And you notice it's the only one in the Northern Hemisphere that uh, includes the Northern, uh, notice the Northern Celestial Pole, pole, the North Pole in the sky, right above Santa Claus's house, if you will, uh, there at the North Pole. And so you have that. And you notice that there is a star close there to the North Pole uh, in the sky, a number one, and then there's all the others uh, that are mentioned. And if you'll scroll up a little bit more on this page, Cindy, let's go on up there. Okay, uh, very good. Uh, there is, again, the diagram on, uh, depicting how big, how bright is those, are those stars. And you see number one is probably uh, about the top, uh, almost a one there. So let's find out. Let's scroll on down to page two of here. And there you have the information. And notice on number one, I've given you a whole bunch of stuff that you can read through and see uh, what, about it. And uh, it is our most northern visible star in the sky. There are some others that are closer to the North Celestial Pole, but they are not visible uh, just by going outside. To you look, you would have to use uh, at least binoculars, but more than likely a more uh, a a larger telescope to be able to see those because they would be very uh, hard to see there. But there's all your information uh, that and, and notice uh, if you want, you can read the last part of it after what's in the blue there, Northern Celestial Pole NCP and at the present time it. So go ahead and read. And remember, everything in the sky, everything in our universe is constantly moving and changing its position. And so um, we will eventually, over a period of time, we will lose Polaris being our North Pole star. And by the way, Polaris, all that means is it is Latin for pole star. That's all it is. But you see up there, I've given you a whole a line and a half of different names, different uh, countries and uh, civilizations and uh, uh, language groups have given to calling uh, that. So, uh, by the way, it's actual astronomical name to be fully full uh, correct there it's on that uh, first line of all the names at the end it would be called polaris borealis which is northern pole star polaris is pole star borealis northern oh there must be a polaris australis and there is one in the south. Okay, well, let's go back to our page and then see if there's anything else we have on there. That's pretty well it. So let's go back to the calendar and let's see what else we have. There is on Monday. Let's look on the 17th. 
there's our moon, and we've had it uh, furthest, farthest away, the apogee, and now here is its closest time, the perigee, and the way I remember it, and I've mentioned before, that I always use it from my uh, mnemonic device, I think of it, the moon is perilously closer to the Earth, and so that's perigee. Well, also on that same day, on the 17th, we have our next constellation of, you can pronounce it Libra or Libra, the balance scale. So let's see what that is, Cindy. And there we are. And you see, uh, normally it's a long E, Libri, uh, Libra, and uh, here it is, and information about it. And there's what it is. And you can see it's with up at number 12 would be your point that uh, the balance scale is hanging from. And there are the two scale uh, legs there. Uh, what is it? Number four, number 17. And then down where the pan or whatever would be that you're weighing of number nine and number 18 and 16 and 19. And you, that's how you would weigh out on what a, what a balance scale is. Quick thing, when we lived in California and uh, went up into the uh, foothills of the Sierras, we went to Sierra Nevada House number three, which happened to be an old uh, stage point for uh, the, uh, what's the name of the, uh, 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 mail route in the west. The, the Pony Express? Pony Express, yeah. Went to Sacramento, California uh, there. And this is one of the uh, uh, trail, the uh, stopping points. And it had was a kind of a hotel, but this time it was a, an ice cream parlor. But upstairs was uh, bedrooms that you could rent out and we went up there just to eat their ice cream. And I noticed over against the wall was a huge, full, eight foot tall, nine foot tall, however big the, the thing was, a balance scale. So I asked them, and it was sitting there, and it was, I said, is this what was used during the time it was, uh, yeah, that's the real one. Well, how accurate is it? He said, well, let me show you. So he went over and he got two single pieces of paper, just regular old typewriter paper. And he came over and he said, write your name uh, in, in pen or pencil on one sheet of paper. So I wrote my name out. And he went over, he put one, one page on one scale and the other page with my name on the other scale. And he let go and that scale moved. And you could tell the difference of the weight of the graphite that I had put on that piece of paper. I said, yeah, it's pretty accurate. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so anyway, I digress. Uh, going on down, uh, interesting thing also, and it's fun, the names of the two po major points of uh, Libra there and you will see uh, their numbers, uh, we'll pick them up. And uh, as we look down and uh, you, uh, let's see, uh, number four, you see that one, see its name? Zubinel Ganubi, okay. And if you'll go on down a little bit, number 12, Zubines Gamali. What in the world? Let's go back up to the page to the map. What is Zubinel Ganubi and Zubines Gamali? Well, Zubinel uh, Ganubi is number four, and it means, in this case, Southern Claw. Hmm, what's number 12? Zubines Gamali. That's Northern Claw. Well, what's a claw doing with balance scales. Prior to 1930, there were no designated areas for the constellations. 
So a constellation could be as large or as small as anybody wanted to determine. It was all subjective. Notice what's to the left of Libra and down toward the bottom left, Scorpius. Would Scorpius, a scorpion, have claws? Yes. And though that at prior to 1930 time period, uh, for some astronomers and some pages uh, in astronomy books at the time, Scorpius uh, went clear out here into Libra. So there's just something else that you can tell them those names of those two stars and that's what that means. And they also, what? And you can, I mean, they're going to keep their socks off the whole time you're talking with them. Okay, let's go on back to the calendar. And where are we? We are on our week here as far as my, uh, Tuesday the 17th, talking about that. So we'll go on over to the 19th and we have planet Mars is moving. And there's its information, but we also have a constellation called lupus. That's Latin for wolf. So let's see what the wolf is. And there you are. Now I uh, put on, there's a whole bunch of stars and uh, you wouldn't need to have all of those, but you can see how it be pointed out. Notice in relation of how to find it, and I'm going to point this out in the planetarium. Notice where lupus is. It's below, up above, Libra. Where's Libra? It is below, and up above would be then Bute. So I will point out in the planetarium and show everyone how to find the constellations for the month of May as we go through it. And it's very easy because we have over there Scorpius and the big one there that's got uh, the black circle and then also another circle, which means that it's a variable star. It gets larger and smaller uh, at times for different reasons. But that is Arcturus. And that will be when you see Scorpius up in the summer. It's the uh, main constellation for the summer. And you see Arcturus, the giant red star there. It will be the largest star with your eye alone, not with binoculars or with telescope. And so uh, it's a much larger than our sun. And we'll get that in the next month in June uh, there. So uh, also notice that uh, down there at the bottom of the page, there is our southern horizon. There you see Circinus. We've already talked about it. And up above is lupus, so we can see all of lupus. OK, let's go on. Let's go back to the calendar, watching our time here. And we will see. Uh, that we have lupus, there's the info. Let's go to the third week. There is our third quarter moon, and that's you will see that in the afternoon and also in the morning uh, of that day uh, there. And there is our split. It is a illuminated side and a dark side, but it's reverse of what we had in the first quarter moon. And again, there's that dichotomy word. Now, let's go on Tuesday the 24th. And we have now, we have the constellation called Serpens Caput. And that's Latin for serpent. And since it's uh, uh, here, a part of that, Caput, that means head. So it's the serpent's head. Let's go to the page. Of it. And here it is, Serpentus Caputus, if you will, Serpens Caput. This is the head of the serpent. And if you scroll down, you notice it goes down. And I have stars labeled from one all the way. And we come down, down at the bottom there. 
There's a bright, uh, brighter star number 15, a dimmer one number 19. And then I have over there to the left, I have a star, there's a circle, a black circle, but it's not numbered. Why? Well, it's in the constellation of Ophiuchus, which we will get next month. And Ophiuchus is the serpent wrestler. And serpent's caput is one half of the total constellation of the serpent. There is a serpent's caput, the head, and then a serpent's cauda, which is the tail, and we get that in June. And so we are actually only seeing half of the constellation. So we that's why we have for the month of May, we are looking at and talking about nine and one half constellations. There you are. Cool. Okay, let's go back to the calendar. And uh, find our point there as far as Serpent's uh, Caput on Tuesday the 24th. And I have something for you in red on the 25th. And that's your time there, Cindy. In May. Yep. Yeah. That's when we have our next, our next uh, night sky tour, virtual night sky tour. Did okay. you want me to show them the dates or I can show them later? You can you can do that. And also I have included the link for them on that uh, page so they can punch that link and there we come up. Yeah, and go ahead and show what you have there, Cindy. Okay, so we have our next one Wednesday, May 25th. And we also have already posted beyond May all the dates that we're going to have for the rest of the year. So um, we have a lot, a yeah. lot coming up. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Well, let's go on over to Saturday the 28th. And I have in red uh, the next one after this Saturday, the next, and it's the last Saturday of the month on the 28th of May. And I'll be talking about June. And notice, what do we have in June? Five and a half constellations. And now you know what the half means. It will be talking about the head, the tail of the serpent. Uh, you got so many things to wow people this month. Uh, they're going to be barefooted the whole time. Now, we also have on the 28th, we have uh, our another constellation, uh, Corona Borealis. Okay, now let's hold on. Borealis. Remember me talking to you that Polaris. It's actually its full name is Polaris Borealis. Bo, it's pole star, and what's Borealis in Latin? North North Star. There you are, Northern. Yeah. So guess what? There is a Corona Borealis, something north. What do you think is Corona? What would that be? And it's in Latin. What would what would English be? Crown. Ah, you've been reading ahead. Let's go there. <laughs> so go to go to that one. Yes, Corona Borealis. That's right. our next one. <laughs> There you are, the northern crown. All right, good. And by the way, we will eventually find Corona Australis, the southern crown. Okay, there's the northern crown. And uh, I will show also for people that are there, come to the planetarium. You see over on the right, you see Baute's, <clears throat> and you see uh, that big star, uh, the circle there that's uh arc uh arctur and uh, uh that's uh Beute's in uh, there in the uh, herdsman and uh we have then i want to show how to find corona borealis and to keep going over uh to something else 
that we'll have. So let's go down to <clears throat> its second page. And there you go. There's a number of things there. And um, there's an interesting one. Notice right after number 13, there is one that's just a, not a number, but it's there, T. Corone Borealis. And there's the information. It was a nova that suddenly flared up. And there's some information about it. And then you can see that if we go back to the page uh, of the map, I think I put that in. If not, I should have. And no, I didn't. So, oh, there it is. Look down on the crown, see number 13. And then there on the line, on almost on the meridian line, the north-south line, there is the capital letter T. And there is that little little bitty bitty dot, as dim as it uh, could put it, and that's where that <coughs> uh, event happened, that supernova. Okay, let's go back to the calendar. Um, what does Aurora Borealis mean? Uh, well, what's Borealis? Um, a star. No, right. no, no. <laughs> Did I mess it up already? Borealis refers to a direction. Northern, northern. Northern, northern okay. what's, the, what's the word you're saying? Aurora Borealis? It's the northern it aurora. Okay. It's the northern, what you see in the northern aurora. And there is an Australis Borea, uh, uh, aurora, aurora Australis, a southern uh, aurora also. Good okay. question. Very good. Very good. All right, we're through now with uh, the there. We got the last week. Let's look on the 29th and we'll see uh, the constellation here of Norma, the, the, uh, the square. And we we have time here, so let's go on to it. There it is, the Carpenter Square. And uh, that was named, and so I just connected some of the stars there to give you an idea. And <clears throat> notice it, its area uh, actually goes below our southern horizon. But we can see predominantly all of it, of, of being able to see it there. There is our southern horizon, if you will, there. And uh, so that's what's pointed out. And I uh, don't see, oh yeah, there is also what's different. Notice down in the bottom left of it in the area, there is uh, number 14 and right above it, there's a circle that's yellow uh, inside and a, uh, an X that's in there like crosshairs and a capital letter A. Let's scroll to the second page. Keep going. Okay, now, where is what that is? And if you go down in the numbers, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then there's an A. And what this is, this is the name of an object in the sky. And let's look over, it's, it's called C89. And that's named after a, 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 a person. And you'll see down uh, in a little bit of Caldwell, and he did a lot of things for the Southern Hemisphere. And go over to the right, and it's mentioned that it's an open cluster. And there's some info. Scroll down, <clears throat> and I have it pretty well repeated right there. Caldwell uh, Visible Objects. And there is C89. It's an open cluster, and there's information about that. Okay. So that's what that A is uh, there. Another one that could show up, but normally not in the southern hemisphere, an M, and that talks about the astronomer Messier, the French astronomer. And so those are M, capital M objects. 
uh, that are listed there. Okay, let's go back to the calendar. Now let's look on Monday the 30th. <clears throat> we had uh, we will experience a new moon this coming Saturday on the 30th of April. <clears throat> and we have the next new moon on the 30th of May right here. There you see that information. And underneath it, we're going to have our final two constellations. So let's go and uh, get to each one of them and as we finish up uh, the month. The first one is triangulum. And there's that word, Cindy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Australia. And in Latin, triangulae australis. There you are. And that means southern. And guess what? There is a continent that's called what? Australia. And what it's referring to? Southern. Southern, yeah. Continent. Okay, so there you are. Can we see it? Well, let's look here. Oh, no, I don't think so. You see where the southern horizon is? It's above all of Triangulum Austral. So, unfortunately, we are not able to see it but we will in the planetarium. Uh, there you have there. Okay, let's go back and we have one more constellation, our final one for the month. And there is Apis, uh, the bird of paradise. And let's uh, see, and well, can we see it? No, it's below Triangulum Australia. So I have it listed, even though it's uh, cap you're capable of it. If you were at further south uh, on Earth here, you could see it and, uh, and all. And but there's the information on it, and I do not see anything else. Uh, no other item there. So that would be uh, Apis and Triangulum Australia. So let's go back to the calendar. Last week, uh, the final week of the calendar, uh, we have that. And we notice here's planet Venus. It's moving, it's going pretty good, moving again into another one. And then here is the first uh, four days of June. And we back, we have an apogee. And then there will be a constellation coming up in June. Uh, well, actually, planet Mars going into a constellation there of uh, Cetus. So we're finished up uh, for our May, a very busy month, like Cindy said. Uh, and then we'll be uh, looking at that, doing talking about that at the planetarium Saturday. And then next at the end of uh, May, we will talk about June. So I'll turn it back to you, Cindy. Oh, and I just want to remind everybody that on the um, the lib guide for the Mayburn Science Theater and Astronomy, we have lots of fun activities for you guys and puzzles, astronomy related. So make sure that you guys check all that fun stuff out. And, um, you know, as always, just keep coming, coming to see uh, these night sky tours. We we're you know hoping that you guys check out the planetarium because then you get to see all these constellations that you're not going to see in colleen texas <laughs> there you go so, yeah and um thanks warren again for sure. um coming with us and joining us i just want to remind everyone that tomorrow is our byways reception at the library from three o'clock to five o'clock come check out who the finalists were for our byways uh, journal there they were amazing this year and we'd love to have you come and some of these objects it was hard to to see very small with the entry but they're huge so come and see them in person and then on monday we have fort hood's environmental science uh, division, they're going to be talking about composting. So, um, you know, we talk about saving the planet. Um, you know, you want to one day get to another planet, then, you know, we need to save this one and um, find out everything that you can about um, 
how to recycle those banana peels. And um, <laughs> then uh, next Thursday, we have another author night. It, that one's in person. The composting is in virtual, but the author night is also in person. And it's from 6 to 8 p.m. We have local authors, some different authors than we had at the last one, and uh, can listen to their writing and meet them in person. If you are serious about being a writer, here's your chance to come and talk to published authors. So lots of good fun stuff for us. And um, we will just, you know, have another night sky tour again at the end of May. So, all righty. Well, Warren? Yes, ma'am. You're so funny. And I, yeah. I, I, I actually was pleased that I could actually answer astronomy questions today. <laughs> Good. You can, uh, by the way, uh, you can go ahead and put your shoes and socks back on. Oh, okay. Will do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty. Well, all you guys, y'all have a great, awesome day today. Go outside, enjoy the weather, and um, we will see you next time. So thanks, guys. Bye, Warren. You bet. Bye.